Good morning, welcome to 59 Minutes. My name is Levi Kones. It is Monday, a wonderful day to start the week, and this week we're going to be talking all about books. To join me in this conversation is a lady who is a life coach, she's a publisher, she's the author of more than 20 books, and still writing more. I'm glad it's Gishoi, glad to have you here. Thank you, Levi. Very happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah. You know me, I've written one book that I'm ringing with. <laughs> Akume kuna watu wameandika 20. Even the one is good. We start somewhere. We start somewhere. Eh? Yes. Tell me, how would you describe yourself? Uh, first and foremost, I would say I'm a Christian. I'm a born again Christian. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm an author. As you can see, I'm a publisher. Mm -hmm. I'm also a life coach and counselor. I, I recently got my certificate from The Hague for counseling, so I'm so excited about that. From The Hague? Yes, I studied oh. with the Hague, the ARLT Foundation there, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and I'm taking my PhD in Information Science. PhD? Yes, Where? in Information Science, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you look quite learned. By the <laughs> <So this. laughs> uh, how do learned people look? Is it a spec? <laughs> I've always said I'll get some for, for look to uh -huh. in there too, seriousness. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so, uh, about books, let me start by asking you, because... Mm -hmm. You know, the journey of uh, a thousand steps starts with, of a thousand miles starts with one step. They say, Snyo, mm -hmm. did you always know you're going to be a, an author? How did you start? That first book, how did it go? You know, take us through that journey up to where you are. Mm, I wanted to write books. I really, really wanted to write books when I was young. So I'd play with papers and fold them like this and have, you know, front cover, back cover, spine. And I'd put my name. I really loved that. So this is a dream come true in very many ways. I admired books, uh, authors, people around me who had written, pastors. I was very, very, uh, what do you call it, inspired by them. And I really wanted to write. So for my first book, this one, Becoming an Amazing Girl, it came after an event we had in church. We had a journey of healing. And I remember when I wrote my journey, because at the end of that journey, we were supposed to write our testimonies and share them with the church. So I wrote mine, I wrote, I wrote, it just kept coming. And when I shared it with the church, I would see people crying because of what I had written, what I had shared, what I had gone through. And eventually I put it into a book and my bishop forwarded the book. So I felt really nice also. So that was my first book. I wrote it, uh, it took probably a couple of weeks to months, depending if you, if you count the time for studying the course. And then I started now looking for publishing. How do I go about it? Because every time I would read books, I would see Zondervan publishers. I'd see this, that, the other. How do I go about it? Mm -hmm. And eventually, I met someone who told me he's a publisher and that he would publish my book. Of course, I was excited, but I was a newbie. So mm -hmm. I, I got books, yes. Some were, <laughs> yeah. Some were nicely packaged, some were not. I got 814 books, I remember. And the rest I am yet to get. And that was in 2009. Oh, I'm wow. still waiting for the remaining oh, books wow. to come because I ordered a thousand the yeah. first time. So that journey was not very interesting in terms of now the hardships of getting a publisher and doing that whole thing. But eventually, as I got to write the other books, I learned a lot. I became a publisher. And now the writing of these other books and helping other people write their books is much easier. But Kusama Kweli Niligongwa, with this first book, this wasn't even the original design. But Niligongwa, in a way, it was helpful, though, because I got my foot out mm. there. But those are some of the things it's I tell character people. character development. Yes, character development. It's so when I work with my authors, I tell them everything, start to end. You make mm. your decisions nicely without that, that thing of, I'm the one who knows you're at my mercy, you have to do what I say. I don't do that with my authors. In fact, I have lessons for that, writing, publishing, and marketing your books. Mm -hmm. So that if you work with me as your publisher, you have all that information, and you can actually produce your books very peacefully, very, very peacefully. The drama that I went through the first time wasn't good. Uh, but I will say anyway, now that the book came out, God gave me such favor. I sold in churches, schools, colleges, I'd get invitations to speak, uh, places like this now and radio. It was just such special grace from God. And mm. then people buying, students asking for more. Uh, at some point I had that my books were being stolen. Like some would buy, some wouldn't afford at a hundred bob then. And then they would steal each other's books. So although that's a bad thing, it kind of told me there's a hunger for this book. There's a hunger for the message that's in the book. Yeah. 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 So it's always good to know. 
that you know at least in a song mm. now between the, the the one and all these books that you have here you've come with a, a selection of books here mm -hmm. give me a bit of a journey through the different books so we can see what kind of genre you're into okay so this talks about my growing up uh, my dad died when i was very young so there was that challenge of not having a father figure the challenges that come with that loss of identity, self-esteem, confidence. I wanted to take my life so very many times and it didn't happen because clearly I'm still here. And that whole thing, together with adolescence, because I was only 15 then, played a number on my life. And eventually I wrote about it. And it helped so many girls through that journey of self-esteem, not having a father, looking for a father figure, that whole journey, it's very, very painful. And now with that, I also wrote From a Romance to a Princess because I felt like a very, very romance. And eventually I discovered, but God is my father. He's the king of kings, so I'm a princess. You know, that was settled. And eventually now, years later, because this was some of my first ones, I discovered um, that I could actually prepare this. Confidence and self-esteem building puzzles. Because you know what you are and how your day goes is what you've told yourself in your head. And you know the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. So if you keep telling yourself, I'm ugly, I'm unloved, I'm rejected, I'm all those things, that's what you experience, that's what you become. So these uh, books, these two books, have hundreds and hundreds of beautiful words to tell yourself. I am beautiful, I am humorous, I am intelligent, I am disciplined, you know, like so many because as you look for the words and circle them that's what's playing in your mind i am all these wonderful things and no word is here that is here totally different so when people mm. get these books they really boost their self-esteem confidence building puzzles yes and self-esteem what such puzzles because that that time when you're also tired you don't mm. think much you just you play a game and it's fun you know they're very good during the COVID time by the way helps with even if you have kids who are suffering with such things, you give them this, you've taken them away from the phone and from tech, and they're having fun and building their, their esteem. So there's that. But the boy child is not forgotten. Because nowadays, it's all about women empowerment. But where is the boy child? Who is this woman going to get married to? So we raise bold boys, you know? And we walk, this is good for the boy himself. It's also good for a mentor. If you want to know how to walk with a boy from start to end, mm -hmm. build them in their character, help them in every way, this will do that for you. You know, be bold, be loving, be godly, be courageous, all those beautiful things about boys. And you, know, you can also be sensitive, you know, because how else are you going to show affection to your children as a father or to your, wa your wife as a husband? So raising bold boys. So now, um, there's also this, peace for twins. Yeah, it helps girls know all about puberty and periods. Every single question is covered here. Girls are very scared to ask their parents some of these questions, and I answer them straight up. We wrote this with my daughter, she's 12 now, and as I was writing this book, we were doing it together, and also asking her, what do you want to know now? Uh -huh. What else? She was 10 then. What else do you want to know? And we'd cover every single thing. I remember speaking in a school last week and answering their questions, and they were shocked. I don't think they'd gotten such candid answers from you know, even their parents before. Yeah. So this helps with that. Um, I must put in my daughter here because I mentioned her. She's written a book, yeah? Discovering Your Best Life Ever. And she shares some really nice tips in here that are good even for adults. Because what I we like do... That. Discovering Your Best Life Ever. ever. How old is she? Yes, now she's 12. She's discovered. Then she, then she was 10, <laughs> yes. But she's discovered. She's quite something, right. you should meet uh -huh. her. And um, I like to talk about this book because she wrote it herself. She wrote three. And then she brought them to me. She said, Mom, I've written books. Can you publish for me? And we had to go through the three, we chose one. And what we do at our publishing house is we have beta readers. We have people in your area of writing who are going to read your book and then tell us, should we publish or not? So this went to about six, seven people and they okayed the book. So it's not publishing just because she's my daughter, no. It's publishing because it's actually a good book. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. All these books have had people go through them and then verify them and just say, this is good, this one don't, this one like that, like that. Um, that should give assurance to anyone wanting to publish with us. It's not a one-man show. There's a whole team that mm. tells you whether your book is actually good or not good. Um, speaking of children, we had a son who came to us in 2014, but God took him in 2015 when he was only 10 and a half months old. Mm. And I couldn't find, thank you, I couldn't find Kenyan books that I could relate to about my grief journey 
because the kind of things I was being told, you know, get another one, you're still young, um, get another one quickly so that you forget that yeah. experience, be excited about, yeah, about the new pregnancy. It was crazy. And this talks about that whole journey, that whole journey of grieving, losing a child, grieving, coming back out on the other side, how God works with you. He might look like he's very, very unfaithful. It might feel that way, but there is hope. And I love working with moms who have lost their children. Whether it's our loss after birth or even a miscarriage, it's your baby. You bonded with the baby. You're the first person to know that you're pregnant. Not even your husband. When you take that test, mm. you're the first person. So that relationship begins with you. And I believe a mother has the longest relationship with her children. So telling someone to get over it in two, three months, I mean, what are you talking about? There's a whole nine months before of a relationship, mm. and then the time the child was alive, and then, so we talk about that here. So there's that. Then it matters um, more of motivation. We have this. This is an amazing girl notebook. It has quotes at the bottom of every single page, and every page has a different quote. So as you write, you're inspired by the quotes there. These quotes are from women, mm -hmm. because this is specifically for women. But you know, both ladies and gentlemen can use them. So we have one that has 100, one that has 200. Take your pick, you can have it like this, you can have it like this. It's your choice, however you want it bound. Then in that line of appreciating, um, thinking, thinking, appreciating yourself, growing your ideas, getting inspired, we have a special book for mothers here. You know, sometimes on Mother's Day, you wonder what to tell your mom, yeah? But this book helps you, like, tell, say thank you to her. For example, I'm so glad and relieved that I don't have to earn your love. Thank you for loving me no matter what. So if you give this as a gift, every page, a uh, hundred plus, there are different messages you're telling your mom. So when you buy this for her and she's using it, she's getting all these beautiful things that you're telling her. Your job is the hardest in the world. God knew that it was you I needed and not any other. Things like that. Beautiful things that you can tell your mom. And then we have two others here that are twin books. For moms and for dads. This helps you reflect on your journey as a parent. What, where are you right now? How well are you fathering? How well are you mothering? And then, because we all come from somewhere, how was your own mothering and fathering? What were you taught? What were you not taught? What do you wish you were taught? And then, now you ask yourself, I wasn't taught about, for example, periods by my own mother. So do I want the same thing to happen to my daughter? No, I'm going to teach her, therefore. What are you taught about money? What are you taught about self-esteem? Friendships. Who teaches about friendships, by the way? That is so hard, you know? When you're adulting and people are just leaving you in WhatsApp groups, it's crazy. Mm. So what were you taught? What were you not taught? Where are you now? Then not because you're reflecting, you ask yourself, if I was to talk to another mother right now, what would I tell this mother about this? Like weight, parenting, time management, what? So we get to reflect. And then towards the end, it's what do you want to leave your children with? If you were to go, what do you want them to learn? So once, you, once you're done going through this whole journal, whether as a mother or as a father, you have actually written your whole life. This is how I was brought up, my pains, my hearts, my joys. This is what I'd like you to learn, and this is what I'd like to leave with you. You know, because towards the end, you're like, that there's a question there, who would you like to leave this with? Mm. And it becomes a beautiful memoir. So if people want to write books about their journeys, these are actually very good guides. When you have a hundred of these, and you answer these questions honestly, you have, you have easily produced a book of a hundred pages, and it will sell. You know, and it will minister to people because the idea is not just the size of the book, it's the content, the quality content in there. So the two last ones that I have here are Bible trivia puzzles. So you have fun Bible trivia puzzles from the whole Bible. So you learn uh, beautiful things from the word of God, people, things that you need to learn, but you learn them in a fun way. Mm -hmm. Like now, what are the names of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, Lamb of God? So you circle them like this, and they're really nice for kids. Uh, who are all the judges in the Bible, which jobs are mentioned in the Bible, midwife, pharaoh, warrior, like that, like that. Then you have puzzles, you have number searches, word searches, you have sudokus, because these are really addictive, by the way. You have mazes as well, mm -hmm. like the whole works. So you learn about the Bible in a fun way. Again, I will tell you, these were very good during COVID, because you just give that to your children. You know, that's when we had to start working from home. So how do you keep them busy? So you mm. give them that and you're good to go. And then now we have this specifically for the New Testament. So the same thing, lots and lots of fun and learning. 
So those I would say are some of the ones I've written. Some of the others I've written are available on Amazon. So they are ebooks, for example, 50 Devotions for Moms, helping moms have a relationship with God in their daily lives. Like what, how can they see God as they're washing dishes? How can they see God as they're taking care of the baby? 50 Devotions for Moms in that area. We also have another one called Passion Without Bats. Because when you're passionate about something, you don't keep on saying, but this, but that. You find a way, you know. So there's a book about that as well. And a couple of others on Amazon. So in a big nutshell, that is some of the work that I have written. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's a big nutshell. <laughs> What's the inspiration? God, really. Because I feel that he puts a message in my heart. And... When that message comes, I tell you, it burns. I must write. I can't, I can't do anything other than write. It really burns and it has to get out. That's number one. Number two, if I have a need for the information that I am writing or that I am wishing I had, it means there's someone else exactly like me who wants that information. There's another mother who's lost a child who has no one to talk to. Or there's another mother who's being told you're grieving for too long because it's three months down the line. So when I write, I know I'm writing to someone just like me. So when I write fast, I write for me. Have I met my need? Have I answered my questions? Because I'm going to research a lot, right, left, center, to make sure I get the right information yeah. from the Bible, concordance, whatever, whatever I have to, to use to research. So second, I write for me. Then third, I write for the needs around me. Because I will see these girls, for example, are not being told about personal grooming. They have no idea that, for example, in the sanitary area, after a certain number of hours, you're supposed to do something, you know. So they, there's a need there. So I write for that person. So generally, I will be driven by a need that is actually present around me, such that if I write a book and it meets the need of the person that I had seen, imagine for me that is enough joy. Now, if there happens to be two, three, four other people like that, well, the mullah is good, you know. But at the very, very onset, it burns, it just comes and it burns. Then second, I write for me, and third, for the need of that person who's there. And mm -hmm. you know, we are very alike in many ways, mm -hmm. because yes, there's ladies and gents and different age groups, but within those age groups, there's a mother going through this, there's a girl going through this, yeah. there's a boy battling self-esteem and confidence mm -hmm. as well. There's a busy mother who would like to engage her children in a godly way, but can't because of the pressures of life. So there is definitely, we call them the ICA, the ideal customer avatar. There's definitely someone who ex needs exactly what I'm writing about. And if I don't write, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. So I just have to. Plus when I'm writing, it's very therapeutic for me. Yeah. And it just flows. You know when you're talking with people who are maybe not very good listeners like yourself, because you're listening very well, there are people who interrupt you at every sentence. But the notebook never interrupts. The pen just writes. It just flows yeah. quite easily. Yeah. Tell me, the... You know, a lot of people want to write, but they have books that are stuck in their heads, you know, for days. Yes. Or they make it to the notebook, but then they can't seem just to get out of that rut and, and write a book. I have met so many people who tell me, you know, I'm writing a book for the last five years, for the last six years. I mean, I took three years to write one book. Wow. What's the difference? <laughs> how, um. how are you doing it differently? Because, you know, 20 books, I'm thinking 2009 to now is uh, just about 13 years. Yeah. 20 books is a year or a, it's like a book and a half a year. Yeah. Um, I would say... What gives? <laughs> character development for starters. <laughs> for my, with my very first book. So uh -huh. I learned a lot. And then I went to all those places and I learned all the processes, start to end. Because again, passion without buts. So you get your rubber shoes, you go to town or wherever you must go to and learn. So after I had learned all that, and of course my information science degrees helped me because my degree is in, in education, German, library science. My master's is in library and information science. Now my PhD is in information science. Mm -hmm. So all that is also helping me a lot. So what I would say to someone, because again, they wouldn't have to go through all that to get to write books, is have a good plan have a really good plan, write for just a few minutes a day, and then get it done in even as little as 60 days. You can write and finish a book if you just know exactly what you want. And this is what I would say in very, very practical terms. First of all, you have a good pen and paper. 
you know, notebook, pens are 10 bob, notebooks 20 bob, like, do you have that at least? Mm -hmm. And then number two, do you have a place where you can actually sit and write? Because it's something about writing, uh, just pen and paper, because you can even write in abbreviations, and it's very fast. You note your ideas, the way they are flowing, you can circle something, you know, it's very easy, rather than typing on the computer first, mm. even if it's just your outline. Do it that way. Make sure there are no distractions. Yeah, if you're a mom you. like me, send your kids somewhere, give them fun books to play with, just something. Get your quiet time. And then have that outline. From, in fact, my outlines begin from the cover. I write front cover, copyright page, like to so the last one. Then I know I have 20 parts in my book. Maybe 10 are preliminary, but still there are 20 parts. Mm -hmm. So if I check off one every day in a list, in 20 days I've done something very significant, mm -hmm. you know. And then now, after you've written your chapters, for example, uh, this one for Losing Jason has several chapters, like, you know, what happened, the loss, friendships, things that I lost, like, you can see, you know, in a snapshot, those areas. So you write those general themes. Then you go to every theme and write underneath. Let's say now, when you talk about visiting Jason's grave, I normally have points there, you know? Did I want to? Did I not want to? How did I feel? Who went with me? Like that. So you break it down. Yeah. Your you outline is your book. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you still haven't written. You're just having the clear idea of every part of the book. So once I do all that, it's very easy to see my book. And I can write any chapter from anywhere. So if an idea comes from, for chapter 7 out of 20, I can write it because I know exactly what is there. It doesn't even have to flow from start to end. And then now, sometimes by the way, the title will come in last, after the whole book is done. And you're like, actually, the message is, then you get the title. So that planning stage for me is everything. If you get that right, you're good to go. Then when it comes to writing, some people prefer to write and then type. Some prefer to just type. But I will tell you what, you can speak your book into existence. There are apps I use, even on my mobile phone, I just record myself. So I talk, I talk, I talk. As I'm talking, it's typing. Then when I'm done, I copy paste into Word, and that's a whole chapter, like that. So technology, I mean, I mean information science, so I would know that. Technology is amazing. You speak, your book is written, then you send it to an editor, and then to the designer. What is the purpose of writing a book? What is a book? It's that your words are on paper. However they get on paper, whether you write or mm. type or speak, you use technology to your advantage. So that's what I do. And then I put off any, anything that is distracting, including the apps you can use on the computer, on your phone. During the writing period, only the writing page will, so, will show, nothing else. You just write, 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 write. For those 15, 20 minutes, 30 as you get used to it, you can even go an hour later on. But as long as every day you've written a line or two, you're doing very well. The problem is you don't write for three months then you come, you have writer's block, you try writing for 20 minutes, nothing is coming. You, you will write your book for six years, you will. But if you have that discipline of, first of all, the outline, and then mm. a few minutes a day, you'll be very good. The discipline it just takes. They, there's also the question of this self-publishing, because you say you, te you, you teach about that. A lot of people are, you know, the, the, the impediment seems to be the cost. Yeah, somebody looks and says, ah, the cost is too much. How do you deal with the issue of, uh, of cost and self-publishing? Do you just walk to River Road and, you know, <laughs> tafuta a printer, do your own thing, a publisher? How would you advise? Uh, I would advise, first of all, just come and take my course. Yeah? Because when you do, I teach everything from the idea to having a physical book in your hands. In fact, after someone takes my course, you can end up becoming a publisher. It's really, really that simple. Because I walk you through how to start, where to go for your writing. If you need to have someone do it for you, we also have ghost writing services. So the writing, the editing, the design, the publishing itself, the printing and distribution. So I walk you through each and every one of those steps. Because when you have the correct info, you're not going to be brokered. The problem here is this. You want to write a book. So you come to me and, and I tell you, oh, I'm going to print this book for it's 1500 but I'm going to River Road or wherever and I'm being charged 200 bob. That's crazy. Put in the work, take the course for example, whether mine or others, take a course, learn the nitty gritties and then go and do it for yourself. If, like, you, if you've written, of course don't, don't edit for yourself, that's a no-no. Because you're too close to be objective. Don't design for yourself, again too close to be objective. But you can surely find out the cost of paper, 
You can find out the cost of ink, the cost of printing, those you can do for yourself. Find out and then go to the ground. If need be, buy your own printers. If you were to come to my office, <laughs> you will find all those things there. You have the printers, the cutting machines, everything. Because at some point I discovered I'm losing so much money outsourcing everything. So even when I'm working with my clients, I can you buy your own printers. If you were to come to my office, <laughs> you will find all those things there. You have the printers, the cutting machines, everything. Again, take courses. Learn how to write well so that when you're handing your work for editing, the editor doesn't have to do so much. So you're not being charged an arm and a leg because you wrote badly to begin with. There are no shortcuts. You have to take the My DSTV app. Either put in your work. You can pay easily on the DSTV website. And you can even pay using USSD or through WhatsApp. If you don't do that, then put in the work. For more info on payments, payment options, and managing your account, download the My DSTV app or visit the DSTV website. The Carabao Cup. Definitely a different kind of knockout. Experience all the action live on Supersport, your world of champions. Here we are, only on Supersport on DS. To, to reading, have you experienced that? Yeah. We are reading nation. What can we do? <laughs> um, people can blame it on economy and what have you, but I think that if the hunger is there, if the mindset is right, you will find yourself reading. Because we can't say that the economy is so bad I can't read a book a month. The libraries are free to join. KNLS is all over. You know, just go and join a library. It's 20 bob, I think, if you pay for the card. But if you don't want to... No, I think, actually, if you're joining the library, it's free. But if you want to use the services every day, it's just 20 bob. And you can borrow a book. I mean, it's so easy. So I think some people don't read. Some people read. In my field, for example, where I am, we, I am generally surrounded by readers. Mm. You know, and we'll exchange books, we're in book clubs, we're doing that. I think it also matters who you hang out with. And you know, if you're a young person or a parent with young children, how are you introducing your children to reading? Are you always on your phone, for example? Or when you go to the salon, do you have your book and does she have her book? Like that. So people can read, people do read, but there's a general misconception that causes people to generalize. You know, yeah. Kenyans don't read. Kenyans read. Those of us in school are reading. We're reading books, you know. Some of us have children reading and writing books. It is happening. So, yeah. But the thing is, I think probably part B of that question that you might be meaning to ask is, is there money in, you know, writing books and selling them? Uh, the question is, why are you writing? Are you writing for the money <laughs> the, or yeah. for the impact? Yeah. You know, because if you're very, very clear Why are you about writing? who you're writing for, you will have your money there. You know, the problem is, if you market to everyone, you're marketing to no one. So you have to choose your particular reader very well. That reader will read. But you can't go marketing a book like this, Losing Jason, on a mother's journey after loss, in a place full of, I don't know, fashion items. Those are not your readers. You know, go to a mom's mm. group, mm. then they will read. Mm. So it's also the targeting in that area. Your reader will read your book. It's not the whole country that will read your book simply because you wrote. There is no special right um, or favor or, I don't know, privilege about writing a book any more than Mama Mboga and her eggs out there. If all of you, you have products, you have a shop. But it's the services you offer. It's that you market. It's that you advertise. Mm. Then people will read. You know, if you have a very good resource and you're not marketing, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. Useless, you know? We have best-selling authors, not best-writing authors. So you must master the art of selling. Talk about your books, tell people, find the right places. Some of these books are for these young girls now. These ones, you go to schools, colleges, high schools, primary schools, talk to them, tell the children, and then now they'll tell their parents and they'll buy. If it's these ones, go to places where mothers are. Like that, like that, like that. Don't just sit there and hope that people will come. This journey of writing is not a passive journey. If you're not actively selling, you're not actively making money. Really, it's just, it's just simple like that. Mm. You have to sell for you to get opportunities to speak in places, go and be a consult. Sorry, go and be a consultant somewhere, be a ghostwriter for someone, be a consultant editor for a certain project, be a teacher telling people how to write books, like three weeks programs, things like that. Or in my case also, when you have 
programs like this, then you have a whole week of mentorship for girls in a church. The church gives you their kids for a whole week, you know what to do with the girls and the boys. You know, so it's so much wider than that. So people will read, but which people do you want reading your book? You'd rather have two faithful followers who will buy each of your books as it comes out. Then imagine that you have, I don't know, 100,000 likes on Facebook and they're not buying. Why? They're not your readers. You know, you have to know who your particular person you is. Got to know who you, and I like the question of why are you writing? Why do you write yourself? I write because it burns, like I said. So first I write for me. But second, for the needs around me. For the needs first, my yours. needs, yeah. because I needed this, for example. I needed all this self-esteem stuff. I needed all this confidence stuff. I needed it myself. And then discovering, by the way, there are other people around me just like me who need the same things. Mm -hmm. So when I get a message, it burns, and then I know it's going to meet a need in me and in those around me. Yeah. Yeah. It, what's the reason why your books are not, you know, wordy? They're not wordy. Because you know, there's, there's a concept, you know, you think you're writing a book, so you must write a in your kitab. <laughs> uh, the books, yeah. first of all, my target audience. Yeah. My target audience originally was these younger girls in high schools and primary schools and colleges. They may not read a lot of words, you know. So give it to them in small pieces. And then that's now step one. Step two is if you have a lot of information, give it in part one and part two, you know. Mm -hmm. That way people can. In fact, my original book for Amazing Girl was pocket size. It could fit in your back pocket of your jeans. Like it was really that small, a personal friendly book, very close to the heart. So I write small things for the younger people because they also don't have that much time. Then now as you go to the adults, they are bigger, you know, because you need more content for those kinds of topics. These are heavy topics to handle. But at the same time, when you're grieving, for example, you don't want to read a lot. You want something bite-sized for that particular topic that you're looking for at that point in time. And then also, I believe in keeping things very simple. Uh, I simplify things a lot. Even when I go for guidance and counseling and I'm speaking to kids in schools, I make it so simple. There's something <laughs> one of my former bosses used to call making something idiot-proof. It's not in the number of words. It's that the message is clear. I remember when I was being mentored in preaching by one of my mentors. He told me, and Gladys, if you can't say it in 20 minutes, you can't say it in two hours. Mm. That was the best preaching lesson I mm. ever got. It's true. So you don't have to say it in a big book. You know, you can still pass the message in short, short words, nice, crisp, clear. Again, also the power of editing. Mm. There's no need to have a huge book full of repetition. Yeah. I agree with you. If you can't say it in 20 minutes, it's, I keep thinking about that when it comes to preachers. I hope you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like sometimes people think uh, someone has to be an hour. No. Punch! No. Uh, but uh, I hear what you're saying. I want you to just speak to uh, those people who are, you know, watching us and, uh, and just wondering. Two types of people. The first ones are, you know, the guys who want to get something off their chest and they're in that place where uh, they haven't even started but would like to start. What advice would you give? And then secondly, what advice would you give to parents? You have a lot of books. For, for, for children, parents and, and children. And, uh, different ages. You even have a journal for dads, one for moms. It's a very interesting uh, outlook because I like some of the things you have written in saying if you were here, you know, if you could take yourself back, what advice would you give yourself about how you are parented and, you know, what went wrong, what went right, so what could do, be done better, that kind of thing. So I'd like you to give uh, those uh, two parting shots and then tell us where, where we can find your books. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you want to write a book, write. Just start. Make an outline. I think that's a very basic thing I would tell you. Make a very clear outline for all the areas your book will cover. Have subtopics for those major themes and then begin to write, even if it's 10 to 15 minutes a day. As you continue to write, it will grow to 30, 45 an hour and you will find yourself in a place of flow where you're, you're doing the deep work and like it's just flowing beautifully and then you will have your book out. 
Uh, that's number one. Number two, for the parents, um, there are books here for boys, for girls, for even you as a parent to reflect on your journey. You can find these books. You can go to ungladdiskishohe.com. I think I can text you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ungladdiskishohe.com. You will find all these things there, all resources there. You will also find courses for how to write, publish, and market your book. And then you can begin your journey. You can even write your book in 60 days and you will be done. Believe me, I have done it. I've even done it in 30 days. So it's very, very possible for you to do that. So you can find me at ungladdiskishohe.com. Again, if you're buying the books within the country, you can go to the Nuria bookstore. They will sell you the book and it will come to your doorstep. That's just one of the best things I like about Nuria. By the way, do you know how hard it is to sell books when you're not using Nuria? You have to organize riders, delivery. Oh my goodness, I had such a headache before Nuria. Mm -hmm. So Nuria for me is everything. You have your books there, they sell across the country, anywhere. Your book comes to your doorstep, exactly where you are. So those are the three things. That's where they can find me. I'm glad mm -hmm. Thank you for yes. sharing. Oh, and if anyone has a difficult thing, your you know, child law, self-esteem, whatever, I'm open. Just send me an email over there. We're going to get chatting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank so you for having wonderful me. Wonderful day to talk all about books. Yeah. That's uh, all we have for this morning. And Gladys Gishoi, she, you can find her at angladysgishoi.com. Yes. Oh, I need to have a .com. I like that. <laughs> Come on, make you one as well. <laughs> <laughs> we brand our others, by yeah, the It's way. powerful, actually. Living yeah. on this .com. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gladisgishoi.com, and uh, you can get all the information that yeah, you need all there. And, you know, let's, let's keep reading. We can never get too much information in our heads, and we always have things we can learn about. Yes, and that's what we things. Yeah. Thank you. Keep writing. Thank you. I will. And keep writing too. I'll try and catch up. Quint. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah. I tell you. I'll Thank try and catch you. up. Have a blessed day. Stay tuned for Leia coming up with uh, Ilosu. See you tomorrow. <laughs>